Rokiros is a 12 years old who seems to be hurt, screaming with pain. There is fire around him, everything is burned and the smell of ash can be felt. Rokiro is on the ground, alone standing over his friends' bodies, apologizing to them. This incident was named the Hanatsuki tragedy. Two years later, we see Benio for the first time. She is living in Kyoto at her relative's house but she will move to Tokyo because she is an exceptional exorcist. Rokiro, who is now a 14 years old teenager, spends his time chasing girls and being rejected by them. On the train to Tokyo, there was a blackout. Suddenly Benio Shikami says that a kegger is near. The kegger appear out of nowhere but Benio is calm and still in her seat. She opens the gate to Magano with a talisman. The kegger shows itself and Benio puts on her mask to defeat it. She fights the kegger with her parents' sword and exercises them one by one. All of a sudden, some of them start eating each other making them bigger and stronger. The several kegger become one so big that it looks like a giant owl. In a more peaceful setting, the Seika dormitory, an old man named Zenkichi Atomi is staring at a moving spoon, a compass that detects Kegar. He gets interrupted by Ryogo Nagatsuji. Ryogo goes to exercise these Kegar with Atsushi and Shinosuke's help. Ryogo asks Rokiro to help, but he refuses to get involved in Kegar exorcism and runs away. In Magano, Benio jumps down and activates a defense called Vajra Talisman, Iron Cliff Wall. The Kegger flies and takes her but she does not sustain any damage. To free herself, Benio uses another talisman, Might Talisman, pulverizing Lion's strength, to cover her swords in flames and defeat the Kegger. The spell drained all her energy and she falls from the sky appear in front of Rokiro standing in a bridge. He decides to help her. Rokiro takes her to her destination and suddenly everything around them becomes dark. They hear a Kegger laughing while taking some kids to Megano. Benio opens the gate to save them. Rokiro finds himself in a battle he didn't ask for. The Kegger wants to eat the two kids, but Benio cut its head off and stops it. Suddenly, another Kegger appears. Benio casts multiple enchantments at once, making her super fast. She destroys all of the Kegger with one hit from her swords. She then uses another talisman to heal one of the kids. Things got quiet for a moment. Rokiro talks to Benio but they gets interrupted by a Kegger that looks like a big spider. Benio tries to attack it with her swords, but she is no match for it. Rokiro is shocked after hearing Benio's words. She dreams of a world without Kegger, so she will exercise all of them and defeat evil. A promise he made years ago to Ryogo before that incident made him give it up. While Rokiro is lost in his thoughts while Benio goes to attack that huge kegger with her swords. Unfortunately, all she manages to do is to create a small hole in its solid body. Then she uses ephemeral lotus dance, that creates a huge amount of attacks to no effect. As Benio's last move, she hits the kegger at the center of its stomach. She has lost all her enchantments and Rokiro appears in front of her. He uses a black talisman and a red armor appears on his right arm. He attacks and destroys the kegger with one hit. Benio starts to live with Rokiro in the Seika dormitory. She leaves with Ryogo and the team to fight a new kegger. Inside the Magano, they find a huge kegger. Benio attacks first. She used a series of enhancements. The first one equipped the talisman to her knees. She jumps to dodge the kegger's attack and at the same time casts an enchantment equipped to her mask. The third and fourth talismans are added to the rest of her body. And finally, the fifth talisman makes her swords bigger and filled with her spell power. The kegger tries to attack her from behind but she sees through it. She cuts its hand, its tongue, and finally, she cut its head off. Chief Exorcist Tsuchimikado Arima, who is the head of all exorcists, visits the Seika dorm. He gives his order to assemble the exorcist leadership. They will meet in the Five Mirror Chamber. In this assembly, he announces that the Miko, the child of the gods, is coming. The chief calls Benio and Rokiro forward and orders them to fight each other. Benio accepts because she wants to test her power against Rokiro. She attacks him with all she has, but he holds back doing nothing but dodging her attacks. Arima provokes Rokiro by telling him that his friends who died in that tragedy two years ago were weak. Blinded by anger, he takes the black talisman and the armor in his hand appears. He tries to attack Arima, but Benio stops him. With one hit, he throws her against the wall. The challenge continues, and Rokiro enraged, throws flames at Benio. He uses the air fesher bullet technique to turn normal rocks into bullets covered with his spell power. Benio feels weak, but she cannot forget her parents' deaths and all the promises she made to them. Such feelings boost her powers making improving her speed. She attacks Rokiro from different angles, and he tries to predict the next attack but she's too fast. The only thing he can do is to use arm as a shield. Finally, he anticipates her move. Benio is charges forward at full speed giving Rokiro the right moment to hit back. The chief steps in and stops the fight before they can hit each other. He announces that Rokiro and Benio are the twin star exorcists. In simple words, they will get married and have a baby and that baby will be the Miko. Both Benio and Rokiro refuse this deal of marrying each other. Ryogo with the other two enters Magano to exorcise the Kegger. Ryogo uses an enchantment for his sword. 
Unfortunately, they are surrounded by a lot of Kegar. The companion of Benio senses the Kegar Ryogo is fighting, so she decides to go help them. Ryogo's team is no match for that Kegar and Benio shows up. Benio casts her enchantments and equips her two swords. She uses the Shores of Enlightenment dance and she attacks the Kegar with all her power. The Kegar opens a gate to the real world in front of a train in the amusement park. In that same park Rokuro is hanging out with his childhood friend and classmate Mayura. Rokuro runs to help some kids while Benio is holding off the Kegar in Megano. She finishes the Kegar with the Moonset Reflection Slash. The Chief Exorcist breaks the news about the Twin Stars to the Twelve Guardians. After this, the Ryogo team goes to exercise a Kegar in an old house. With the help of his fellow exorcists, Ryogo starts to purify the house. There was only one room left. They feel as if the air got heavier and they get scared. Ryogo opens the gate to Magano and they get attacked by a two-faced Kegar. It kicks two of them out and imprisons Ryogo inside. They tell Rokuro what happened and he asks Benio's help to save Ryogo. In the meantime, Ryogo tries to hide from the Kegar in Magano. He has no talismans left, so he cannot escape Magano. Ryogo is gets beaten badly by the Kegar and senses that his death is near. The Kegar is about to eat Ryogo until Rokuro appears and purifies it with one punch in its face. Suddenly, another Kegar appears behind Rokuro and he also ends it with one punch. Benio comes to help by destroying the smaller Kegars. Rokuro and Benio fight the remaining Kegar. Rokuro keeps purifying each of them with one punch while Benio uses her swords. Fighting Kegar every day is unusual. So, the Chief Exorcist orders one of the Twelve Guardians, Shimane Karuga, to investigate the high appearance rate in Japan, especially in Narukami where Rokuro and Benio reside. The Kegar are detected at an elementary school, they kidnap the whole football team, and the exorcists enter Magano to save them. The fight starts. Rokuro uses a talisman to convert rocks into bullets. Air Fisher Bullet Benio uses Shores of Enlightenment Dance. She attacks all of the Kegar at once with incredible speed and exercises them in a flash. Shinosuke tries to bring the kids back to their world but is suddenly attacked when a Kegar appears from underground and hits him. Rokuro gets distracted and almost gets eaten by a Kegar, but Ikaruga manages to save him in time. More Kegar appear forcing Ikaruga to use a talisman, Guardian Master Talisman, Vermilion Wing making his sword huge. With his sword fixed in the soil, Ikaruga uses a technique that makes a big hole in the ground while setting all Kegars in fire. Benio explains to the rest that the Twelve Guardians are people chosen for their superior skills in everything and Ikaruga holds the title of Suzaku, the Vermilion Bird. Soon after this, a gorilla-like Kegar appears. Seeing what happens to his friends, Rokuro becomes angry and casts the enchantment to summon his demonic arm. The Kegar attacks and Rokuro hits back. Their punches hit each other, but Rokuro's powers cracks the Kegar's body and exercises it. Ryogo alongside Rokuro and the other two go together to exercise the Kegar. Rokuro uses his techniques to exercise the Kegar. He starts with Air Fesher Bullet, destroying all Kegar that surround him. Suddenly, bigger ones appear from underground. Rokuro, Ryogo, and their team members are fight to exercise them all. A huge Kegar appears Ryogo attacks it but gets hit. The Kegar destroys the barrier talisman, and everyone is down except Rokuro. His expression changes and his anger starts to control him again. He uses his black talisman to summon his demonic right arm. The Kegar tries to attack Rokuro, but he is faster. He climbs the Kegar's arm and punches its forehead to exercise it. Arima gives his villa to Rokuro and Benio to live there. After going through a test that helped them work better as a team, Mayura leaves the villa after visiting Rokuro and Benio, and she walks back home. Something strange as happens, the ghost of a child is following her. Back in the villa, Benio found a good luck charm of Mayura and instructs Rokuro to give it back to her. She tells him that the charm is used to hide the spell power. This way she cannot be detected by the Kegar. Mayura ends up being dragged to Magano after being attacked by a human-like Kegar. Rokuro intervenes and hits the Kegar in the face but, this time he couldn't destroy it. Benio and Rokuro team up to exercise it. In the Seika dormitory, Sage and Amawaka appears. He comes to investigate the Kegar corruption. This is a phenomenon that happens when people who have powerful spell power become a Kegar for some reason. But he also comes to clean his apprentice's mess. He goes to Magano to help Rokuro and Benio. He purifies the Kegar with one hit, Tiger Strike, Kagetsuchi with a arm that looks like Rokuro's, except for the fact that it is white. Seijin is Mayura's father and one of the Twelve Guardians. He is also the master of Rokuro and Ryogo. So, he challenges Rokuro to fight him. The teacher versus the student. Seijin attacks Rokuro with the air fesher bullet but the power is insane. Rokuro tries to close that difference by using a huge rock. 
But, with one little rock, Seijin destroys it. Seijin tells Minio that the Hinatsuki tragedy was not the result of Kegar. Rokuro killed the trainees himself. After that, he turns back to Rokuro and informs him that one of his victims, Yudo, is Benio's brother. Benio is shocked and asks Rokuro if it is true, and he admits everything to her. But, like any story, there is always more than one side. Seijin tries to explain but someone interrupts him, Yudo. Rokuro sees Yudo and is immediately as angry as anyone can be. He charges to attack him, but Yudo ties him with a bandage, without using a talisman. Yudo and Seijin recall what happened two years ago. Yudo performed a ritual that turned his friends into Kegar. The ritual succeeded, and the people who weren't with Yudo were eaten by those Kegar. So, Rokuro decided to stop them by killing them. Back to the present, Seijin explains to Benio that what Yudo did is forbidden. That what he performed on his friends is one of the darkest rituals. And of course, she still cannot believe that. Benio's dream is crushed when Yudo tells her that he never respected her as an exorcist. Filled with anger, Rokuro cuts the bandages and attacks Yudo with his demonic arm. But this time, it appeared without using any talisman. But even with all that power, Rokuro is no match for Yudo. He stops him with one finger using a similar demonic arm. The fight continues. Rokuro is looking like a monster and Yudo is very calm. Rokuro charges and Yudo throws him back, again and again. So, Benio decides to intervene between them and Rokuro hits her bringing him back to reality. Yudo disappears after saying that Rokuro's sin is not for killing his companions, but for lack of commitment to become truly powerful. Rokuro and Benio recognize how weak they are and promise each other to become stronger. Their first stop is Seijin. They ask him to train them but he refuses. So, they go back home. A few days later, Subaru Maichima visits Rokuro and Benio in their home. She is Benio's master. She is also one of the Twelve Guardians. She is accompanied by a weird-looking creature called Tatara, Subaru's Shikigami. Rokuro and Benio ask Subaru to train them, but she sent them on a wild goose chase instead. Suddenly, a Kegar appears and try to create a gate from Magano to enter the reality realm. Rokuro and Benio summon their weapons to fight. Unfortunately, Benio's arm weapon doesn't obey him. He goes mad and starts to attack Benio. To fix this, Benio uses a Tranquility Talisman to calm down his weapon but it drains her spell power. Now to the real problem. Countless Kegara surround them and Rokuro attacks them to protect Benio who cannot fight. Subaru intervenes and exercises the Kegar with one hit each. They are still surrounded by a huge number of Kegar. Subaru summons two guns using her technique, Star Empress Master Talisman, and starts shooting all the remaining Kegar. Then, she brings bigger guns. Using a shotgun and a machine gun, she exercises a lot of the Kegar at once. Tetara has the power of Toto, the Flying Serpent, which is the most violent and chaotic power of the Twelve Guardians. While Benio and Rokuro are following Subaru's instructions, they saw a Magano torn. An octopus-like Kegar appears. Rokuro uses the Air Fisher bullet technique to attack it. Benio uses the Shores of Enlightenment dance, but nothing works on that thing. The octopus releases black ink into the air. Now, Rokuro and Benio are blind to its attacks, forcing them to switch to the defensive. They barely avoid the attacks, but they find a way to anticipate it. So, they start to predict each other's thoughts. Rokuro makes the first hit with his weapon, then Benio attacks with her swords. Then they attack one point together and destroy the Kegar. But they realize that it was a fake, created by Subaru to tighten the bond between them. Benio goes out for a run, she finds a Kegar and decides to purify it. There were three huge Kegar. Suddenly, someone comes and destroys them. Kamui appears looking for the twin star exorcists, and he gives her 10 seconds to choose what to decide. Hearing those words, she realizes that Kamui is the one that killed her parents. Blinded by anger, she rushes to attack. He dodges all of her attacks easily and even destroys her sword with his bare hands. He kicks her in the face, breaking her mask and throwing her away. The Neo is helpless as Kamui puts his foot on her head. She can't avenge the death of her parents, and she will die the same way. Rokuro appears and punches Kamui but has no effect on him. The Neo is hurt and Kamui is having a good time. He is a Basara, a Kegar that consumed too much spell power to the point where they evolved to a superior class of Kegar. An inferior class Kegar attacks Kamui and Benio and Rokuro use this opportunity to run away and leave Magano. Rokuro uses the talisman to heal Benio and she tells him about the incident where Kamui killed her parents. This reminds Rokuro of how his life fell apart after what happened two years ago. So, he goes to Magano again to face Kamui. He attacks him, but Kamui stops all of his punches. Finally, he lands the first powerful punch but it's not enough. Kamui gives Rokuro the chance to choose. Continue to fight and die, or surrender and leave. This is his hobby. Kamui gives people choices when they are facing death to see how they will react. 
Also, Kamui finally remembers Benio. Six years ago, he gave her the chance to choose between her father and her mother. When she couldn't choose because she was terrified, he asked her parents whether he should spare their lives or that of their daughter, and they chose to sacrifice themselves so that Benio can live. Rokuro snaps when he heard this. He jumps at Kamui hitting him again and again. Kamui is using his hand as a shield. For the first time, Rokuro lands a punch that throws Kamui away. Kamui uses a cursed talisman to equip armor to his feet and attacks Rokuro sending him away. He wants to end Rokuro but Benio appears. She decided to enter Magano again after seeing Rokuro's bravery. She uses a new technique, Dance of the Tiger Lily on the White Path, making her even faster than before. Unfortunately, she still cannot defeat Kamui, but she is not giving up. She strikes again, but one hit from his armor throws her away and Rokuro saves her. Rokuro and Benio combine their power. Her sword synchronized with his demonic right arm. Her sword becomes huge and filled with spell power, they attack but all of that power only makes Kamui lose one foot. Kamui retreats as Rokuro and Benio are exhausted with Arama watching everything. This is all for this anime. Give the video a like, and I will see you in the next minutes.